Good morning, everyone. And good morning to everyone out there and Pastor Greg. Sheila and I are filling in for Pastor Greg this morning. Uh, he has had quite... He's had quite an eventful week in terms of travel and stuck in Little Rock due to the storms that roll through Chicago, canceling his flights. And he'll be coming home this evening. So if you've seen on this Facebook page, then you know he had an extra story to tell during his travels for helping an airport security in apprehending a man there who really needs our prayers that he gets the help that he needs. If you have not seen it, Pastor Greg will probably share the story when he comes back. For announcements this morning, we have communion next Sunday when Pastor Greg is back, which is also Mother's Day. And there is coffee hour after church today, so please join us downstairs. We have some birthdays to celebrate. Erica Shanantello, Bill Wetterall, Sharon Gell, and Mark. Our anniversaries is Brandon and Kara David. Now, are there any other announcements for church this morning? Janet? Marge? Okay. Our advertising for MyFest, which is the 20th, 21st, and 22nd, is that correct? 19th, 20th, and 21st, but we're helping on Thursday downstairs for preparation. Any volunteers that can come and help with either the preparation or the actual serving on that weekend would be great. Probably let Marge or Janet know. And Ron had an announcement. Any other announcements this morning? If not, then please stand for our call to worship. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Behold, our God is a creator. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Behold, our God is a redeemer. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was moving over the face of the waters. Behold, our God is a Holy Spirit. Let us worship the God who is one in three, three in one, who heals our brokenness and gathers up all of our meanings. Let's join together in our opening prayer. Gracious God, who has the power to create the whirlwind and the wisdom to speak to us in the still, small voice, we ask that you bring your love to us today. We are in need of the strength of your spirit. We live in the hope of your call. We depend on you. There is no other who gives us such hope and life. Be with us, care for us, comfort and confront us with your love and grace. Through the power of the spirit we pray, amen. Let's sing together our opening hymn, Come Thou Almighty King.
You may be seated. In the spirit of confession, please join together with me in our prayer of confession. O oh God, our God, we celebrate the new life which you have given us. We have experienced broken lives made whole, old wounds of alienation healed over, and tired spirits rejuvenated with new vision. Gracious God, we are so grateful for the purpose and possibilities you have placed before us. Yet there are times when doubt has overcome hope. Cynicism has replaced dedication. The world's values have captured us more than our, yours. Forgive us those times, we pray. Help us to let go of the past that we might move joyfully into a new future that points to your love and justice. Amen. Our assurance of pardon. The good news is that we don't have to depend on ourselves, but on the Spirit of God to give us vitality. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now, let's take time to greet each other around us with the passing of the peace of Christ to our neighbors, our family, and friends. I also pass the peace on to those of you out there watching from home and around us. Blessed be us.
please be seated. Our Old Testament reading is Psalm 30. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have drawn me up and did not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried to you for help and you have healed me. O Lord, you brought me up up my soul from Sheol, restored me to life from among those gone down to the pit. Sing praises to the Lord, O you, his faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may linger for the night, but joys come with the morning. As for me, I said, in my prosperity, I shall never be moved. By your favor, O Lord, you have established me as a strong mountain. You hid your face, I was dismayed. To you, O Lord, I cried, and the Lord, I made supplication. What profit is there in my death if I go now down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it tell? of your faithfulness. Hear, O Lord, and be gracious to me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my mourning into dancing. You have taken off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy so that my soul may praise you and not be silent. O Lord, my God, I will give thanks to you forever. Our gospel reading this morning is John chapter 21, verses 1 through 14. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathanael of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We will go along with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net to the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and jumped into the sea. But other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, They saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. And Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, 153 of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. There's no children's message. I didn't have time to prepare one. The sermon today is love isn't love until you give it away. And these are the words that Pastor Greg has written for us to hear. A man showed up at church with his ears painfully blistered. After the service, his concerned pastor asked, what in the world happened to you? The man replied, I was lying on the couch yesterday afternoon watching a ball game on TV and my wife was ironing nearby. I was totally engrossed in the game when she left the room leaving the iron near the phone. 
The phone rang, and keeping my eyes glued to the television, I grabbed the hot iron and put it to my ear. So how did the other ear get burned, the pastor asked. Well, I had no more than hung up, and the guy called again. <laughs> now there is a man who was focused. He was so caught up in watching the game that he didn't know what he was doing. This probably describes the mood, the state of mind of Jesus' disciples. They were fishing and still quite weren't sure what their mission with the resurrected Jesus was. So they fished, probably going through the motions. They were as lost as a ship without a rudder. Even the fishing was bad. They fished all night, says the writer of John's Gospel, and they caught nothing. Early the next morning, however, when they were still in their boat, they saw the risen Christ standing on the shore. They didn't realize it was him. Christ called out to them, friends, have you caught any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your nets on the right side of the boat and you will find some. Now every fisherman will tell you that location is important in fishing. Today's fishermen use sophisticated fish finders to locate schools of fish swimming far beneath the water, and fancy lures, and the latest graphite fishing poles, but the disciples had no such devices. Still, what difference could it possibly make if they didn't move their boat but only threw their nets onto the other side? Maybe if Jesus had pointed them to a nearby cove or had told them to work their way down the shore a few hundred yards, but the other side of the boat? Still, they did as he said, and when they did, the net was so full they could hardly bring it in. I don't believe that Jesus telling them to fish on the other side had anything to do with the location of the fish. It had much more to do with who Jesus is. The disciple John understood that, for he said to Simon Peter, it is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard this, he jumped into the water and swam towards shore. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish. And when they reached shore, they saw a charcoal fire with fish on it and some bread. And Jesus told them to come have breakfast. John says that none of, the, none of the disciples dared ask him, Who are you? For they knew it was the Lord. Jesus took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. When they had finished eating, Jesus turned to Simon Peter. Simon, son of John, Jesus asked, do you truly love me more than these? Yes, Lord, Peter answered. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus asked, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? Peter answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. And a third time, Jesus asked him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? John tells us that Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him for the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. It's hard to escape the symbolism, intended or otherwise. Peter was warming himself by a charcoal fire in the high priest's courtyard when he had denied three times that he even knew Christ. Now sitting around a charcoal fire where Christ has prepared their breakfast, the risen Lord asked Peter three times, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Is Jesus giving Peter a chance to redeem himself? Twice when Peter says, Lord, you know I love you, he uses the form of no, that means intellectual knowledge of a fact. The third time Peter uses the word no, he uses a form that means knowledge gained through experience. You can see Jesus standing face to face with Peter with a gentle hand on Peter's shoulder and saying to him, feed my sheep. As you know, I fly a lot these days to speak, to teach, and to train others, and have tried to do what I can to help others when I can while getting onto my flight. Usually it is to help someone with a heavy roller bag place it in the overhead bin or to lift it out for them when we deboard the plane. Pastor James Hewitt shares this true story about a flight that he was on that really brings home Jesus' command to Peter to feed my sheep. 
a flight from Denver to Wichita was boarding. On an ambulance, an attendant carried a 225 pound man as the last traveler to board. And as they cradled him into a seat in front of us, it was evident that he was totally paralyzed from his shoulders down. He was strapped in tightly, but as the pilot taxied to the runway, the centrifugal force lunged him to the right, causing him to fall towards the next seat. The stewardess again propped him up in an upright position. Hastily, we were airborne. Beverages were served, then a meal. And as I finished the meal, I looked up to see the paralyzed gentleman, probably 27 years old, with the meal before him, with no one to feed him. My eyes filled with tears. The hostesses were busy serving food to all the passengers, but here was a person traveling alone who could only look at the meal. It was beautifully prepared, tasty, and far above average for airline food. Before I could wipe the tears from my eyes, I slipped from my seat to his side and inquired if the stewardess would be helping him to eat. He did not know. He asked if I might help him. He responded with, okay, thank you. I would be so grateful for your help. As I cut the meal into bite sizes and placed them in his mouth, I felt awkward, conspicuous, and much needed, but much needed. Before long, I was coordinating bites as well as if they were entering my own mouth. He told me of his unfortunate accident, his lonesomeness, his joys, his struggles, his faith, his hope. His name was Bill, and our spirits blended we experienced sacrament. Upon returning to my seat, my spirit was humbled as I thought of all the people who have, had the, who have heard the good news of the gospel set before them. It's available, but no one to feed them. Crippled with spiritual and psychological paralysis and no one to feed them. My spirit flowed to the words Jesus asked Peter, Do you love me? Jesus responded, Feed my sheep. When Jesus is telling Peter to feed my sheep, he is telling Peter to share his love, to give his all in service to others. After all, Jesus had given his very all to show the disciples and the world how much we are loved. He gave himself, so you might say that love is not love until you give it away. One night in New York on Broadway, the great star Mary Martin was preparing to go on stage, as she had a thousand times before, in Roger and Hammerstein's South Pacific. Just before she took stage, a note was handed to her. The letter was signed Oscar Hammerstein, who was that evening on his deathbed. The note was short, and it simply said, Dear Mary, a bell is not a bell until you ring it. A song is not a song until you sing it. Love in your heart is not put there to stay. Love isn't till you give it away. When the play was over and the cast rushed her backstage and asked what happened, we've never seen you perform that way before. Mary read to them Hammerstein's note and said, tonight I gave my love away. I can hear Jesus' words to Peter in that. Peter, do you love me? Feed my sheep. Jesus was saying, Peter, you know the song. Sing it. Peter, you've got the bell. Ring it. Peter, love isn't love until you give it away. Amen. Um there are any joys of uh, concern or joy this morning, I am going to walk down with the microphone and have you say that. Our joy is Mark retired on for the, the family of George and Betty Seibel. Um, they were both uh, died on in, in a, 
terrible car crash uh, up north. Uh, the the car, car went over the center line and they were struck and uh, Betty died at the scene and George died a few days later. So we have some good friends of ours. So uh, Christ in your mercy. I'd also like to lift up prayers for travel mercies for Greg and that he gets home tonight without any more incidents happening. Christ in your prayer, Christ in your right. Yeah, Please join me in prayer. Gracious God, we praise you for the countless blessings which we receive from your hands, the beauties of creation and the bounties of the earth, the joy of life and the pleasure of friendship, and the good of work and the gift of rest, privileges to share happiness and sorrow with one another. We lift up our prayers to you, and we also pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Richly and abundantly has God blessed us. Our offering has been collected, so, that this, so at this time we will hear Mark play a dedication for our morning offering. Gracious and always loving God, you've been asked to accept these gifts which we, your people, offer up to you. Granted the causes to which they are devoted because of love given to your glory through Jesus Christ our Lord, we pray, we share, and we live. Amen.
gracious and always loving God. Oh, sorry. May the strength of God sustain us. May the power of God preserve us. May the hands of God protect us. And may the way of God direct us. May the love of God go with us this day and forever. Amen.